Hey guys, welcome back to 10 Minute Reviews. I'm Jason, bringing you today's video. My fuzzy co-star Freya just went bolting down the stairs, so she probably ran outside to scream at somebody walking by. She may or may not show up. Uh, if she does, she'll probably firm us her way in. As always, guys, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. We'd appreciate any support you guys might want to give our small little family channel. And don't forget to check the links down below our Discord channel. And I now put ourselves in the uh, Amazon Affiliates program based on your guys' suggestions. So the links to the books, if you guys like the books or, or, or want to check out the books, the links are down below. Please check them out that way, otherwise they'll boot us out of the program. The links actually have to be used. Today I want to talk about a, a uh, book or, or a series, book two in a series that I've, I recently discovered and already reviewed book one. So I want to talk about Tom Elliott and The Grand Game 2. So I'm going to skip the usual four categories that I talk about, and just talk about uh, um, just talk about the books. I already talked about the four categories in the first the first video. Overall, guys, it's a fantastic book. Fantastic book. Absolutely awesome. This series is incredible. It's probably my number three favorite lit RPG series. Yes, it's got a lot of, of similarities to Rise of the Winter Wolf, especially book one. Book one that occurred in a dungeon. But now, book two, he's escaped that dungeon. He's escaped that dungeon, made a lot of deals, went back on a lot of deals, looked out for number one, made a lot of enemies. May or may not have made a couple of friends. It's really hard to say. Made a lot of enemies. But managed to escape the dungeon with his principles intact. He's the only one that got out of the dungeon without being sworn or aligned with any particular power. So he's managed to avoid that. He learned about the powers, he learned about the the um, the forces. Learned that there's other stuff, but doesn't really understand it yet. Especially things like, uh, um, like this wolf mark that seems to be on him. But now, we're no longer in a dungeon. He escaped the dungeon, now he's in a sector. And as he discovers, this sector that he is in is an independent sector. It's a hidden sector. It does not border any other sectors. If he were to try and cross these mountains and get outside the borders, he would just be lost in a void. And that alone has a lot of politics going for it. The same force that, uh, or the same power, rather, demigod, god, player, that was controlling him in the dungeon, or trying to control him in the dungeon, is still a major player in this sector. He only has a few days, thanks to some agreements, he's got a few days of safety from that particular power, but not from others. For such a low-level, weak person, weak character, weak player, he has managed to get the attention and borderline ire of quite a few powers. I think four by the time this book ends. So he's stuck, he's now stuck in the sector and he needs to figure out how to get the hell out of the sector, which of course is going to cause him to, to do more things that he probably doesn't want to do. But he also starts learning a lot more about what's going on. He, this is where he really learns a lot more about players, what being a player means, what players can do. The fact that it is possible for someone to be a player that is not Isekai from somewhere, somewhere else. Learns more about the forces and what the forces are. And again, I've already covered it, but they're basically gods. They are players that have ascended to, to godhood, basically. And... That is not, like, they don't just level up to a certain point, now they're so powerful, they're gods. They actually have to ascend. Their, their, their classes can evolve, which is something that Michael learns in this particular book. This is the first time he really starts to understand the evolutions, because he evolves. And he starts seeing and learning more about what that means. And although he doesn't fully understand it yet, it brings him even more attention from more powers, but he doesn't fully understand what the evolutions quite mean quite yet. But he does start to learn. And he meets a wolf pack. He meets a, a dire wolf pack, which they have uh, are basically human level intelligence. So he starts being able to learn more about wolf. Because he's got this mysterious mark of the wolf. And he starts learning what wolf is. And wolf is basically a... a they, they call them ancients, but they're, they're basically the old gods. The old gods, and they were more animalistic. You had wolf, and of course things like fox, and, and dragon, and, and snake, and stuff like that. And they were the old gods. They were the old gods that controlled and ruled things prior to the powers. They were more, they were stronger, they were more powerful, but the powers, the players that ascended to, to demigodhood or godhood basically, there were more of them. There were more of them. They worked in concert with each other, and, and they hunted them down. And they continued to hunt them down 
as they show up, because apparently these ancients are immortal. As they die, if they die, they are simply reborn. But they are not reborn as an ancient god. They are reborn as a player and have to to satisfy a number of conditions in order to, to move up. Basically, there has to be a bloodline of wolf within them, and that's pretty spread out. There's a lot of people with it. Then they have to satisfy, satisfy certain conditions in order to make it up there, and that's what Michael starts learning. He starts learning more about wolf, more learning more about the house of wolf, and whether or not he actually he, he wants to continue to increase his ties to him. He is, of course, very determined to stay independent from the powers, and especially from the forces, light, dark, and shadow. Mostly in this one, he is more concerned with just getting the hell out of this hidden sector. He wants to get out of this hidden sector, he wants to get into basically the more the, the world or universe at large within this game. Because it's still treated, it's still a game. It's still a game. And he's still a player. And he still wants to survive and he wants to grow and he wants to to be able to live his life, and he wants to live his life, be independent, not holding anybody else. Again, guys, this is an awesome, awesome, awesome series. You guys have to check it out. If you have not already checked it out, check out book one. After you guys hit the like and subscribe buttons, then just click on the link down below and check out the book, and we will catch you guys next time. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Bye now.